Indianapolis, Indiana. Everybody knows it's the capital of Indiana and home to a lot of sports teams. It has a reputation of being a big city with a small town vibe. But what's it all about? Is it fun? Is it safe? As we'll see, the answers to those questions are clearly no. But Indianapolis is one of the biggest cities in the Midwest and worth talking about. So when I was passing by, I had to pull off I-65 and spend a day here. The day I passed through Indianapolis was a nice one. The sun was out and it was unusually warm for November. A perfect day to grab a pork tenderloin sandwich and do a short tour of Indianapolis, Indiana. What a joy and what surprise when I opened up my eyes and see an Indy city passed me there. Psych. Indy, 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 It's not that fun. Ah, Indianapolis. Indiana Polis. That means Indiana City in Greek, I think. It's a pretty big place population here is more than 850,000 people, and no, they're not all rednecks. It's growing here, not by a lot, but it's not shrinking. But as we'll soon discuss, the type of people moving here aren't the type of people you want in your city, unless you like criminals. We're downtown right now. We're going to drive around downtown Indianapolis and see what it's all about. Along the way, we'll talk about the good and the bad, what it's like living here, and even chat with somebody who grew up here to get her perspective on what Indy's all about. Sadly, I tried to focus on the positive things about living here, but it was hard for both of us to stay positive. There's just too many things to complain about nowadays here in Indianapolis. Downtown India is sorta okay. It's pretty slow paced. There's certainly no hustle and bustle. You can park easily and it's pretty cheap. It's not going to wow you with things to do, but you could find enough to do to stay busy if you lived here. There's not a lot of culture here. It's mostly bars and restaurants with basic Midwest food. Steaks, burgers, chicken, taters. There are many nationally known museums downtown, and there's a zoo, and there's some pretty cool areas where you can shop. We'll see some of that along the way. India's added a lot of condos downtown, and there are a lot of hotels which support the nearby sports venues. Within, or close to downtown, is the NBA arena where the Pacers play, some college basketball arenas, and of course, the stadium where the Colts play. Peyton Manning came to town and threw a lot of touchdowns. So in 2008, they built him Lucas Oil Stadium, and what followed was even more development, and a Super Bowl, and worldwide attention. So you could say Peyton Manning really helped make Indianapolis a better place with just one arm. There's parts of downtown that are very nice, and the city's always looking to make it better, but goals and realizations don't always match up. Today, there's frustrations from locals who say downtown's getting more dangerous and run down. Stores are closing, and there's a lot more gang activity down here, and there's a lot of litter and homelessness downtown. The day I drove through must have been the day after a major sweep, because I didn't see much of that at all. But it's usually worse looking down here. Maybe they heard I was coming. While downtown isn't too bad, most of Indianapolis is pretty run down and beat up. The south side's industrial, and there's a lot of older homes and crime. The west side's a lot of strip malls and some hoods and a big racetrack and an airport. The east side has now become Little Chicago. Yes, it is bad over here. So bad that Indianapolis is now in the top 10 in the nation for crime. Even more dangerous than Chicago per capita. Yes, I said that. If you had to move to Indianapolis, you'd probably want to live on the north end. Anywhere due north of downtown is much nicer. The Broad Ripple neighborhood's very nice, and as you get out of the downtown sprawl, most of the nicest parts of the area are in this general area here. Zionsville, Fishers, Noblesville, and Carmel are all super nice places to live. Probably the best places to live in the whole state. One good thing about India is the cost of living. You can still get a home here for about $200,000 as of this writing. That's dirt cheap. Although, again, just about anywhere you live in Indy proper is either run down or crime ridden. So what happened to Indianapolis? How did it get so bad here? We're going to talk to somebody who lives here soon, but it's actually pretty shocking how fast this place has gone down the tubes. The homicide rate here has gone up just about every year over the last decade. In some cities, you can put up with the crime because of the nearby amenities. If you live here, that's one thing. This is your home, and there's some good people in town. But unless you want to live a sheltered, posh lifestyle just outside the city limits, 
I can't see any reason to recommend you move here. No way. Did you know the Chargers always kick the Colts' butts in the playoffs? I did know that, Mappy. I was a huge Philip Rivers fan. I used to love watching the Chargers beat the Colts every time. In fact, one time I got thrown out of that Lucas Oil Stadium for cheering too loudly at a Chargers-Colts game. I may have been just a little bit too drunk. The Chargers have beaten the Colts two out of three times they've played, all time. I'm surprised it's not four out of five, snicker. All right, so right now I have Olivia on a call. Hi, Olivia. Hi. Nice to meet you. I was in Indianapolis um, the week of Thanksgiving just a few weeks ago, and I drove around downtown. And um, I know that you grew up there, and then you kind of went back, and you still live in the, in the area nearby. And um, I just wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about Indianapolis. Okay. So I used to live in Indiana, and um, I used to go to Indianapolis all the time. Um, a lot of people say it's kind of a boring city, um, but I also hear it's getting better. It's improving in terms of things to do. How do you feel about that? Um, I feel like it has kind of improved. Uh, but then again, not really. I mean, some of the things that they were starting to ha build up, like the mall downtown and stuff, it's starting to get, you know, the stores are the stores that were in there are becoming vacant. And it's like they start getting ahead and then they start going back. So, um I mean, they have kind of made the canal a lot nicer, so that's something somewhere to go downtown. But and then also the games and stuff that go on down there. But I'm not really into sports, so. Mm hmm. So when did it start getting better and improving? Because I know they called it Nap Town, and I, I, people say they called it Nap Town because you know Indianapolis. But I also hear it was called Nap Town because it's boring. Um, I know it was traditionally a really boring downtown for a long time. And then, you know, they built the stadium downtown and it kind of revitalized things for, for a while. Um, when did things start to get better there? When did they start to build a bunch of new stuff? Um, I would say when they built the Circle Center Mall. So that's been that's been a while ago. Um, and that that kind of brought more people downtown, you know, because they could go shopping and they could also go see like movies and stuff that were there. But then when I went there maybe three years ago, all those stores and everything are gone. There's hardly any stores in the Circle Center Mall now. And um, I'm not even sure if they even have the game and the video uh, floor in the mall anymore. So I don't know. Why Why are the stores vacant? Or um, Well, you know, all the stuff that happened with the riots last year. Um, I was, I've read that, you know, some of those stores are going out of business and then, um, I, I'm assuming people just aren't going shopping down there anymore. Mm -hmm. So downtown was improving. It was getting to be a little bit more fun and now it's getting worse. Yes. I would say it's getting worse. Um, mm -hmm. The streets are, you know, a lot of the homeless people have moved down, down, down there. And then when they were having all of that basketball stuff going on a couple months ago, they ended up actually moving those homeless people out to um, hotels like that were not in the city. But I mean, they're going to end up eventually moving back down there anyways, but they just ended up, you know, moving them to a different area. So that way the people that were down there didn't end up seeing them. Yeah. I, when I drove around, um, it was very clean. I didn't, I don't think I saw any homeless people. I drove around downtown for, for a good couple hours. Um, I thought it was clean. I didn't see homeless people. Maybe they had, you know, actually know it might've been because they did just move them all to, you know, out, out of the city. So that might've been why, but. I mean, it's not like some of the other videos I've seen. It's nothing like that. But they're like under the bridges is where mainly I was noticing them at. Mm -hmm. So Indianapolis is getting worse as a city then. Yes, I would say it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. I, I know the crime. I, I, I just read and I talked to people um, that they say uh, the news reports and locals say that Indianapolis is more dangerous now per capita than Chicago. I can't believe that. I know. I told my son that and he didn't believe me when I when I told him he had to hurry up and Google it. But, you know, he ended up reading it. And uh, I don't know if you heard about this, but I just read yes, yeah, yesterday that it's actually they are it's actually probably going to get worse because the sheriff department is not going to be, you know, doing transports and stuff for the city and, you know, surrounding counties anymore. So now, you know, the, the police are going to have to do it and it's just, it's going to take up more of their time and stuff. So they're thinking that people are going to get off on more crimes than what they already have. And I don't know. 
the the prosecutor i think is also one of the main problems because he's not you know pushing charges that need to be pushed against people so yeah it's like that a lot of cities they're not prosecuting crimes the police are understaffed um they're catering to some of the homeless problems they can't keep up with the, the spike in crime it's like that in a lot of cities i just you know indianapolis has always been sort of just this under under the radar kind of quiet sleepy place that is growing hasn't wasn't really known for being really bad except for the east side's been pretty bad for a long time but well, overall, see, I- I grew up on the east side and off of 21st and post uh i lived there for maybe a year and a half and like i mean i didn't feel you know like i was in danger or anything but now i wouldn't even drive over there i i just wouldn't i don't know if it's because i became like more aware as i've gotten older of the crime but i mean just back then you know like 20 years ago i i wasn't scared but i would not drive down there now Mm -hmm. yeah bad for indianapolis is is would be good for some cities now the east side you know, people would say the East Side's bad. No, that would be good and compared to like South Side of Chicago or parts of St. Louis. Um, but that was always the bad side of town if you were going to like look at it in terms of crime. Um, but yeah, now it's just straight up out of control on the East Side. <laughs> like, yeah, there it, it's to the point now that um, people are, are moving out of, of that side of the city. You left. Um, do you know other people that mm-hmm. are? Well, actually, I've I've I only lived on the east side for a year and a half. I was actually living in Homecroft, and Homecroft is not a bad area or anything, but I mean, just areas around there is just really shady. I remember one day I woke up, they were like looking for someone with a gun that had been around, that was running around the neighborhood or something, and uh, there was also a murder down the uh, like a murder. I don't know, someone got killed down the road. It's just. I, and then I have the citizens app. So it's like I get all the notifications of all the crime that's been going on around there. So, I mean, it was just way too much. I mean, it was a nice area and it's sad that it's gone downhill, but I was just hearing gunshots and just things I didn't want to hear. So Do, does anybody know why crime is so bad in, uh, in Indi- Indianapolis now? Like what's going Why? Um, I'm thinking that it's because the prosecutor's not prosecuting people. He's just letting, you know, things go and then when they do arrest people they let them out you know a day or two later because you have some company that's bonding these people out of jail you know and then they end up committing a worse crime a couple days after that so Um, it's it's just it's just it's a shame um and i don't want to make this all this is supposed to be a general overview of indianapolis so i don't want to just focus on the negative um, so let's give people kind of an idea, a little bit more of a well-rounded look at Indianapolis. We, we talked about the bad stuff. We could talk about that for an hour. Um, in your opinion, how would you, if you were to divide Indianapolis in a North, South, East, West, clearly the East side is, is the bad side when it comes to crime and poverty. Um, the North side is going to be um, a lot nicer in terms of like you've got broad ripple and then you've got like the fancy suburbs on the north end correct uh yeah i like i just moved back down here like two two or three years ago but we've been going out to eat on the north side um they have the mall up there in castleton they also have all kinds of different restaurants up there but i mean (laughs) that's that's another thing like crime isn't just you know on the east side in indianapolis it's you know north south east and west but um I mean, yeah, there's places to eat out there. There's the mall. Uh, I don't think anyone really goes to movies or anything, but I mean, it. the north side's not that bad. And the the west side's mostly, it's the airport and then some kind of strip malls and kind of sketchy areas by the speedway. Like, Yeah, I wouldn't go to any of the malls over there. Those There's nothing in there. I went there like maybe 10 years ago and there was just like a whole bunch of those um jewelry jewelry stands in there like but they it wasn't even real it wasn't even real stuff it was like you know fake gold fake grills and stuff like that so fake grills that you like yeah. wear in your mouth yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> buy that crap i don't know um okay and then so the west side's kind of run down and sketch and then the south side if i remember it's really industrial and kind of like a little bit uh it's much older it's the kind of the older side of town. You get some rednecks down there and some good old boys. I, yeah. I yeah. Um, there's the mall, but that's all the way, you know, in Greenwood there, you know, and that that's another thing. Like I'm noticing that there's a lot of these places that, you know, I grew up, you know, seeing these like stores and stuff and like, even like restaurants that they're not even there anymore. Like they've closed down. There's so many places that are just like shut down. I don't know why, but. So the only real nice place is, is like the North end in that city anymore. Yeah. Right. From, yep. I mean, 
it's it's a that's a shame well they did they did make that i haven't been there yet but they had like this new um hotel downtown that ha- it's supposed to be really really nice it's like um i don't it has like some kind of restaurants in it i'm not even sure what it's called but it's a pretty nice place downtown um and it, I, I wish i knew what it's called but i can't remember mm-hmm. but it's like a new hotel that has like things you can do in it and stuff so mm-hmm so right now I'm showing downtown. Let's talk about downtown a little bit. It, 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 it's it's not going to blow you away in terms of excitement, but there's some things to do downtown to stay busy, right? I mean, I know you guys have some really cool museums and um, there's some restaurants. I mean, how would you describe downtown to people? Um, there are there are some museums. There's Newfields um, Lights, I think that's what it's called. I don't know. It's an, it's an art museum. Um, I've heard that that's pretty good. There's also like the canals actually pretty nice to walk along um they have like um different pieces of art on there and sometimes if you go when it's nicer you can like ride a little like um paddle boat and stuff so Mm -hmm. are there a lot of jobs in indianapolis for like tech jobs or stuff that's you know would be like white collar jobs anything that um um, yeah actually there is like my boyfriend he um is a maintenance tech um but he he was working at um, a company on the north side for about five or six years. So I would say around the north side, there's a bunch of them. Um, there used to be a bunch downtown because my dad also works in that industry. But I'm pretty sure that they've all gone because my dad quit his job there and uh, started a business in Columbus. Um, but there are some that are on the south side. And then I heard that Amazon opened up. So there's um, actually I think there's a couple of places with that Amazon companies are at so mm-hmm. and i know that they're, they're adding condos i mean more people are moving downtown right so that's yeah good. i've seen a lot of condos and um, apartments like looking around i've noticed that and they look like they're nice and they look like they're new so mm-hmm. um, i know they fixed up that mass ave area on like kind of just outside of downtown that's got some cool areas to eat and dine and there's some artsy fartsy stuff over there Um, oh yeah yeah there is and and like i said i i've seen some of the condos and they do look really nice as long as they're i mean i don't know what kind of area they're in but they seem to have like security and um also like a garage and stuff that you can park in Mm -hmm. okay so downtown's trying but they're failing in many ways in terms of keeping the place active and growing and getting people to come down there. Yeah, um, I would say so. Yeah. But I mean, then again, you know, it, it's hard to get a house like around downtown or even a place to live. I heard that like the rent and everything is like sky high right now. So, I mean, there are people that are looking for places. So. Mm-hmm. How's the cost of living in Indianapolis? Is it, is it going up? Is it getting way too expensive like everywhere else or is it still yeah it's getting way too expensive like everywhere else um if you can find a house to rent it's i would say it's at least double what you would think that it's going to be so like what what what's double? okay well like we are renting right now while we find a house and we were only expecting to pay like i mean we we were we moved from a little town but we were only expecting to pay like eight to a thousand dollars a month we're paying fourteen hundred dollars a month but I mean, the area is nice, you know, we're in a nice neighborhood. So, I mean, we don't mind that, but even if you find a house, that's like, you know, in a, in a rougher area, it's still like, it seems around the same price. So. Mm-hmm. Would you recommend people move to Indianapolis? No, I do not. I do not recommend people move to Indianapolis. There's like the, the schools aren't that great. Um, I, I would stay out of Indianapolis. Like if you work in Indianapolis, I would recommend moving to like Carmel or, you know, uh, Greenwood, just someplace around, but not Indianapolis, not Marion County. Mm-hmm. Carmel, Fisher, Zionsville, the nice areas, Greenwood. Yeah, Noblesville, uh, just Avon. not Indianapolis. Uh, I don't know Avon that much, but yeah. um, I lived in Noblesville for a little bit and yeah, just anywhere but Indianapolis. Anywhere but Indy. That's mm-hmm. too bad. You know, it, it, it it's kind of becoming one of the not desirable areas to live in the, in the region. I mean, people, you know, you hear about St. Louis and Chicago and Cleveland and Cincinnati and all the troubles that they have. Um, but who would have thought Indianapolis would, would be having some trouble right now. I mean, that's, I grew up there and it's like, it's nothing like it was. So what would you do to 
make Indianapolis great again? I would get a different prosecutor and probably a different mayor and hire a bunch more cops. They need to have, you know, a mayor and I don't know, like they need to have a mayor or someone that's going to back the cops, not someone that's going to just, you know, down talk them every chance they get, you know, and not really make uh, the people of Indianapolis, like not make them uh, their lives and everything seem like a priority. I just feel like it's too much politics and they're not really trying to make things better. That's too bad. Are you going to stick around? I mean, it seems like you're not, you're not going anywhere though. Uh, I'm no, we're moving, we're moving farther South. <laughs> we're staying in Greenwood and then we're actually looking for like a smaller town around Greenwood. So. Mm-hmm. Do you think Indianapolis is ever going to get better, get back to at least where it was, if not become a great city? Uh, it has a lot of work to become what it was. Uh, I mean, it wasn't even anything that, that great, but I mean, it was at least a lot safer, you know, and you weren't worried about, you know, getting shot while you're driving on the highway or anything. Like, I don't even like driving anywhere around anywhere in there. So we tried to stay out of there, but I think it has a lot to do in order to get to how it was. So another city that's having some hard times, Indianapolis people. Yeah, I went over to the the east side and went to Lawrence. Do you ever go? You probably never go. To no, Lawrence. I do not go to Lawrence. <laughs> I went over. Actually, that's one of the cities that um, is worried about, you know, the sheriff's department not, you know, yeah. stopping that. They're real worried about that. So, yeah, I drove over there. I went to the far east side. I mean, they, I've been to some really, really bad places and that I didn't feel like, oh, my God. But I did find some housing projects that were like abandoned, that were like squatted in. Um, and there were just a bunch of people like standing around and I, I can only imagine, you know, after dark, it's just bad. Um, somebody told me that a lot of the people that are moving into Indianapolis are coming from Gary, um, East St. Louis, Cincinnati. Which I've not- heard, yeah, I've heard, I've heard that too. A lot of them are coming from Chicago and like just bring in, you know, all that stuff down here. But I mean, there's nothing that we can do about it. And, you know, if they aren't going to, another thing I heard is that like the people the you know, they're trying to make Indianapolis like a little Chicago, I guess. But I mean, I don't know. No, no, you you do not want that. I, I mean, I tried to steer this conversation into positive. I wanted to tell like a good story of, of Indianapolis and give people kind of a well-rounded idea on what it's like. But I've talked to two people that live there and I have relatives that live there and everybody immediately turns negative as soon as I start asking about it. It's kind of tough to be, you know, well-rounded about it when everybody's just so like down in the dumps about the state. Yeah, of I'm sorry. <laughs> you told me you wanted to do that and I forgot. It's but. all right. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you know, we had a conversation about it and, and it, it just, you're not the only person I've talked to. Every single person I've talked to is just frustrated and fed up and um, they're leaving or they're going to just deal with it and hope things get better. And, and people say, you know, you can leave and that the crime is everywhere. The crime is not everywhere like it is in Marion County. It is not. Like we, like where we live now, we don't hear gunshots every night. Where we were living before, we didn't have, I mean, we were probably like, we were living in a small town and, you know, there wasn't any crime at all. So, I mean, we were probably like, you know, being protected by, you know, not being around all the crime. But it's, there. It, the crime is not like it is in, in Indianapolis. It's not. So. Mm-mm gunshots going inside of homes and people doing carjackings. And I mean, you'd think you were in Chicago, but you're not. Yeah, no, it, there, I mean, every day there's multiple people that are getting their, their cars taken and they're not leaving them running. They're, you know, walking out to their car and getting, you know, a gun put to their head while they're trying to get in it. So. It seems like I moved from here in 2016. It seemed like as soon as I moved from here, it seemed like crime just sprung up and, where I used to live, I used to live in a crappy apartment on the west side. I wasn't that far away from a lot of shootings. Um, mm-hmm. Like when I lived here, even I would see things in the IndyStar.com articles about a shooting like less than a mile away from me. A lot. Um, so yeah, Indianapolis. Um, I think the reputation of the city is starting to catch up with the reality of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for a long time, people were talking about. Oh, what a cute, adorable Midwestern boomtown, even though it never really 
you know, grew in population that much. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of homers here that love this place and have, look through it with rose colored glasses. <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone. So it's pretty clear by now that elected leaders aren't going to help you. If you don't like what you saw in this video, demanding change won't work. You're going to have to do it on your own. If you want to be safe and want your community to be a place where people want to live, you're going to have to clean the place up yourselves. You're going to have to work with your friends and neighbors to lower crime. Politicians clearly don't care as much anymore. It's up to us. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation.